I just want to show you this real quick. This thing is extremely well packaged. Everything's in its own box, has a clear label. Like, that attention to detail is just wonderful. Um, I wish some of the 3D printing companies would do like that. But yeah, good job, Calm Marker. I've been setting up this Calm Marker B6. This is the 20 watt model. Um, you can see all this stuff here. I've just about got it set up. Don't mind me watching Usagi Electric there in the background. I just need to go ahead and hook it up to Lightburn, make sure it works, and uh, you know, make sure Lightburn sees and everything. We'll get some some tests going on it. Um, I will come over here real quick, and I will say this thing was extremely well packaged. Everything has its own little compartment pocket. Um, again, on this piece, all of the boxes had their own little thing, and then even the ruler had its own cutout. So pretty cool. Um, yeah. Let's go and get this thing connected and check it out. It does have like an autofocus and a bunch of other nice little features. You can remove this and set it aside so you have the power over on its own. And it has a riser so you can fit bigger parts in there. But yeah, pretty much, pretty much it. Let me uh, get this going on the computer. So I've started trying to dial in some settings here. This is me playing with a piece of carbon steel. You can see where I got a little bit of engrave, more engrave, more engrave. And then you'll have to trust me, but you can really feel that. That you can barely feel and you get a little bit better, but that is super deep and I'm really happy with that. Um, you can kind of see where I did a chart here. And I was just playing around with this welding coupon that I had. So then I decided to take a look at this knife. You can see here, where the factory has put their mark on it. This is just a cheap Bud K knife that I bought just to practice on. So then you can see the two different, or four different um, types of finishes or engraving I've achieved. This is what I would consider a deep engrave. Oh wow, it is still quite warm. This has been off for a few minutes. But you've got a deeper engrave here. It's hard to really tell. Man, that blade's holding a lot of heat still. I did all these at once. That's why the blade's a little bit hot. Um, I thought I'd let it cool long enough, but I guess not. I really like that way that looks. Um, I need to get in here and you know just clean it up just a little because it had schmutz on it from shipping and whatnot. But I'm really happy with that first try. This is more what I would call an annealing here in the uh, second position. Just a little ghosted image. And then I went for just a black kind of effect. I'm pretty happy with that too, but that's mostly gonna be on the surface. Um, it's not gonna be anywhere near as deep as this. You could come back in and use some paint or ink or something else to try to make that you know, more like that, but then you'd have the deepness. And then we tried just one more setting over there. This, I was going for a white effect, but it didn't quite work on the stainless, so I need to dial that in a little bit more. But you can get a good idea here, if it would focus, of the kind of you know finishes you can do, uh, engraving you can do here with this 20 watt uh, com marker B6 laser. Pretty cool. And here is where I tried with a thin piece of stainless, and I just got it too hot, and then you could see where it warped. So always test on material before you just assume you know what you're doing. That's why I used this welding coupon, because I did get it too hot when I was trying to work on my settings. So you can kind of see where that goes. But you can also see like up here, these first two were doing pretty good. The third started to warp it, and then the fourth really warped it. And some of that was because I was going through it and not letting it cool down and whatnot. But yeah, I could have got a pretty good effect up there with the first one. And as you can see, we came over here onto this stainless and even doing all four of those together, I started to get much better results as I got a feel for the machine and the settings. Every machine is going to be slightly different on the settings, so always worth practicing. I actually bought like five or six of these to practice on, but um, I'm pretty happy with those results. And now I can, you know, just tie something to this that says COM Marker B6. I've already saved those settings in Lightburn so that I can reference them later. And then I've got a good sample piece for. Let me see what kind of steel this is. This is 1144 stainless. So then I would have, you know, a nice little specimen. All right, so I've been playing with some brass here. You can see I tried two different settings to get a good engrave. I'm 
the one on the left is much more rough because it's deeper and the one on the right is a little bit smoother but they're both pretty satisfying and then I did a photo this photo of me and my wife she crocheted these hats for us uh, writer Frankenstein and Frankenstein this was at a uh, trunk or treat that we went to maybe three four years ago and they came out really nice it's my first try ever doing a photo on brass this up here is actually clouds in the sky that were in the photo so it's not like an imperfection or anything that's that's part of the photo but yeah i'm i'm really satisfied with that guys it's the first success i really had with brass i never did have much luck before with the the other laser from them um i didn't try these settings though either so but i'm really happy with the way that came out now it makes me want to get a bunch of brass stuff and i don't know like that's just fun so yeah uh, overall i'm really happy with this laser i will say the autofocus didn't work for the brass it did for everything else um, I think the brass is too reflective, so I did have to adjust. Nothing was happening with my settings, so I left it running and I just manually adjusted until I started getting action, and then uh, that worked fine. So, yeah, you might just have it on your material that you're using, just have it do a, a very light, I don't know, a very tiny dot or something, and then just uh, manually adjust it. Or you can get out the ruler and do the calculating and everything. Um, I found this way to be much, much easier. But yeah, I really like that. I'll have a link to this in the description. You'll probably see this more on the channel. Um, I want to play with it some more. I got some other projects I got to get to first, but then I'm going to come back to this because I really like that autofocus. And, you know, it's 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 just a nice machine. Um, I Like I said, I had that other comm marker. I really liked it. I would mark tool steel and stuff with it. This is just kind of their upgrade, or upgrade from the, the B4. This is the B6. And, you know, it just has the autofocus and a little bit nicer in some regards. And, yeah, I like it. Check it out.